Absolutely not. I refuse to say anything. Oh, wait. Caught in a paradox. Hey, folks, everybody hear me okay? So we'll get started. Uh, let's see, what's going on this week? Uh, some good progress on Bakes on Mesh. Um, Anchor's tracked down a couple of remaining issues there. So I'm hoping we can get that to RC in the not too distant future, but uh, this depends on how things go in testing, I think, as well. Um, let's see, I've been doing some work this week on uh, sort of Animesh follow-up stuff. Um, I'll probably talk a little bit more about that uh, later. I think Eep is uh, plugging along. Uh, Ryder, do you want to comment on uh, anything with that? Sure. Uh, we are rolling the Eep simulators out to uh, to Blue Steel and La Tigra. Uh, we did simulators out to Blue Steel and La Tigra. Um, so, um, so there are now more EEP regions out there. Uh, the viewer is down to one, uh, well, uh, one last major issue um, dealing with ex uh, experiences and that I believe I have a fix for. Um, and uh, so, so I think we will be RC very, very soon. Um, like, like soon. <laughs> um, the fix for the stuck. Uh, give me more information, please, Lucy. Which which stuck wind light? Yes, please. Uh, let's see. Uh, heads up on LL Git environment. There have been a few. Mi there have been a couple minor changes uh, to uh, the data that. Well, Lucy's looking things up to the uh, to the data that's being returned. Um, and there will be another small change uh, coming next week. Uh, the wiki page is the wiki page is what will ultimately be returned. Um, and I think that is I think that is all of the EEP uh, all of the EEP news. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's see what else is updated. We've got bug splat um, in an updated RC. That's mostly just a change in how logging gets reported, but uh, it's required a bunch of fiddly work getting the installers to work correctly on Windows, so uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of an ongoing thing. Um, Let's see, so I can talk, uh, oh, we've got a, a bug link here for, uh, for Ryder. I am looking, does Jeff Bot have to say? Oh, yeah, uh, yes, Lucy, that, that is, uh, I have most of what you've uh, what you've addressed in here fixed. I was just looking at one more 
one more thing dealing with crossing region boundaries and uh, so 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 yes that is that will be that will be corrected in the next uh, in the next viewer All right, uh, so let's see, you mentioned we were doing a little bit of work on Animesh customization. Um, one thing I've been doing that really is, is kind of just prototyping, but I've got some hooks so that if you have uh, body parts in the inventory of an Animesh, then that can be used to customize the skeleton of the corresponding Animesh. Um, the reason it's just prototyping is because um, that's that's not a complete mechanism for implementing it. Uh, if if you're looking at an animation that's owned by somebody else, you don't have access to its inventory, but you could uh, actually use that hook to um, figure out what the animation is supposed to look like. So the next step there would be working out some kind of communication mechanism so that this stuff can get sent back and forth to the simulator and doing some looking into that. Uh, we have a, kind of an embarrassingly large number of different ways to send object updates, but none of them are really extensible in the sense that it's easy to add new fields. So um, looking at trying to come up with a technique that would make it a little easier in the future if we want to add, want to add more information going forward rather than view it as a separate problem. Uh, so that is uh, in progress. Um, let's see, another thing that's been requested uh, in the Animesh context is a thing that I think, I think uh, Lucy, you filed um, about requesting some additional LSL parameters for, um, for Animeshes and uh, doing a little bit of thinking about that. I, you've, you've mentioned a couple of things for getting the triangle counts, um, and I'm wondering if it would actually be more useful to just have some kind of mechanism for getting things like streaming cost or land impact directly. As, as far as I can tell, the only use for triangle counts is to do some sort of viewer side calculation of, of those numbers and um, change the formula then that validate the script so that that would be sort of a hassle yeah it's true the, the viewer actually does have the triangle counts I think the request was more for getting the uh, is more for getting the estimated triangle counts the things that are actually being used for the land impact calculations which are based on like the size in bytes of some things rather than actually counting. Uh, triangles are needed for linking, delinking. Uh, sorry, run that by me again. What what do you need the triangles for when you're linking, delinking? Is this for figuring out whether a link is going to be allowed or is going to push you over the, the triangle threshold? Yeah, I, I'm not sure the best way to do that. The, the problem with you know, ha letting you query triangles is that the, uh, um, you know, the rules could change on, you know, what is and isn't allowed in the future, and then, you know, all the, all the scripts that are trying to use those values are, are, you know, going to start giving wrong answers. So, it, it seems like 
it would probably make more sense to have some kind of a hook that just lets you check directly whether something is, you know, linkable or that sort of thing. Require the server to pull the asset data. It actually does pull the asset data now because it has to for Animesh, right? You can't. Um, you you. It doesn't actually extract all the triangles, but it does. It does get the um, the sort of top level information, and that's what it's using to get the estimated triangle counts. Um, and the, the server has to have that information in order to do the enforcement it does now. So, so there is some information on the server side, but it's not it's not as detailed as on the viewer. You actually, have a topology or anything. of a of a rough. Yeah, it doesn't unzip all the pack data, which is why we're using the estimated triangle count. That's just easier to get on the back. Oh, no, I'm still here. I don't know how many people are hearing me okay. Uh, so getting an LSL function to turn on off Animesh, um, don't currently have that in the pipeline. I think if you had it, you wouldn't like the way it worked. Um, you know, most of the use cases I've heard about are for things like, well, I want to turn into non-Animesh so that I can save on land impact when the thing doesn't need to move. And it's going to look horrible if you try to do that because the graphics are never going to line up. Um, you know, the... The rendering pipeline for Animesh and non-Animesh is completely different, and uh, so uh, I, I don't know if, if there's a compelling use case for why we want to be able to flip that bit by LSL. I'm, I'm willing to continue the discussion, but uh, it's uh, I, I think it's not going to work the way that some people have been hoping it would. Reset skeleton, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lucy, I mentioned that I want to try to make um, try to make our object update mechanism a little more flexible, and that's one reason. It would be nice to be able to just drop in something like you know request reset skeleton as as a field in some uh, uh, in some data blob, and then everything just works rather than having to have reset skeleton. So uh, uh, I am hoping we can get some kind of a hook for that. Um, probably in such a way that you, um, you know, we send out a reset skeleton request at the same time as you request a reset skeleton on your own. Um, I would not be as keen on having that as an LSL function. The, the problem is that resetting the skeleton is not... Um, it's not a perfect guaranteed reset, right? It, it clobbers any state that's been introduced by animations that you've played. So uh, I think if I think if it was really easy to do it in LSL, then people would just kind of sprinkle their code with skeleton reset requests, and the results would probably not be that great. Um, but uh, you know, we can we can talk about it. Uh, the first step, anyway, would be to get it hooked up so that it gets triggered, you know, after a uh, after an explicit re reset request in the viewer. Uh, yeah, I don't think it would make sense in LSL back, but uh, anytime we talk about a function, people ask to have it in LSL, so. Uh, viewer side to reset skeletons or animations on Animesh, probably that's a good idea. The, currently, there is actually a way to do that just locally, but you have to have some debug setting enabled. Um, if you have the right debug setting enabled, then you can right-click on an Animesh and, and say reset skeleton. I think it's debug animated objects. It may just be an undocumented debug setting. I don't know if there's anything to look, but um, yeah, if I think, just a second, let me try that right now.
All right, so I set debug animated objects to true, and I click on, let's see, what is an animesh around here? Is the doggy an animesh? All right, nice doggy. Uh, now I right click, and yeah, I've, I've got options for reset skeleton and reset skeleton and animations. Oh, actually, that may be your menu um, since it's an attachment, isn't it? Let's see, do I have a standalone animesh around somewhere? Here, let's dump in a Santa. No, not allowed to res things. Admin status, res it now. There we go. Okay, now if I right click on this guy, yeah, there's a reset skeleton option at the bottom of the menu for a uh, for an isolated animesh. It looks like it doesn't work for animesh attachments. Yeah, I think, like when I click on the dog, I get a, I have the reset skeleton option, but I think it's actually the reset skeleton option for the avatar that it's attached to rather than for its own skeleton. There, saved you from the Santa. Anyway, so that would be another possibility would be to, uh, you know, once we've got the mechanism for sending along a skeleton reset request, we could we could hook it in for animashes as well. It would, you know, basically be the same, same work either way. Oh, um, Veer, I did. I did want to bring up um, a case for uh, an LSL function to turn Animesh on and off, making an object Animesh and then being able to turn it off of Animesh. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, and, and it kind of tied in with an experiment that I ran after last meeting, where I was trying to see if I couldn't get an attached Animesh to work with Bigson Mesh, and it actually uh, turns out that if you um, Say you, you have an animesh and you attach it to your avatar. So say somebody has an animesh horse that they're riding. Um, they can attach it to their avatar, turn off the animesh, and then use bakes on mesh to texture the, uh, the, the horse or whatever the attached animesh is. And then after the texture has been applied uh, through bakes on mesh, you turn the animesh back on and the texture remains. Um, and I can actually demonstrate if you want. I, I think I have it set up. I, I made a little uh, attached animesh character that just is walking, just a human. Um, and uh, if you want, if you wanted to see it. So the idea is that the horse is getting textured with your uh, baked textures in that case. Right, right. The horse could be textured using either one of the um, auxiliary big textures or, say, a skirt texture, uh, something that wouldn't normally affect uh, the avatar uh, itself. And so they could use those extra s texture slots to actually texture, say, like a horse, if a horse wanted to be a palomino yeah. um, or, a, or something else, uh, different uh, coloring. They could change that through Bakes on Mesh by wearing a, a different universal tattoo. 
I, I just wanted to let you know that the capability yeah, is there. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't, do we really want to do that? I'm, you know, my, my concern is that, uh, you know, if we implement a sort of a, pardon the expression, kind of half-baked way of, of um, you know, supporting bakes on mesh for animeshes, then we're kind of, that, that kind of locks us into not having sort of true baked textures for, for animeshes, right? The, the true baked texture would be that, you, you know, the animesh itself could actually have its own wearables and it would have its own, you know, baked texture computed from that. Which, yeah, but if, if, you know, we potentially do it that way, then we actually don't want it to be using the, the avatars textures. I mean, I, I think the animesh is being like a, I, a, you know, a kind of a potentially standalone object. So the idea of, of using the avatars textures on it doesn't really feel like the right solution. I mean, I, I realize you could get some interesting results with it, but, um, I I think you know we it it may make more sense to say that you know they don't actually use the um, they don't actually use the bakes of the corresponding avatar, but that you know someday they may have their own bakes instead. Yeah, I agree. That would be much better. Much better. I just wanted to let you know that that there is that capability uh, sort of right now. And and Beck was asking, well, what if I have three horses? If you did have three horses, if you set one to bakes one, one to bake two, another one to bake three, each horse could have a different, a different texture applied to it. Um, but yeah, I agree with you, Veer, that a, a different system just for the animesh characters that have their own bakes would be definitely preferable. I just wanted to let you know that it is possible. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that, that is a case where it might actually buy you something today, but it seems like it's. Um... It's a little bit of a workaround for, for just kind of the limitations of what we can currently do, too. But yeah, fair point. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe that's it for Animesh customization. Um, let's see. Uh, Beck, I, I, I want to talk maybe a little bit about your discussion about um, uh, texture filtering as well. Um, there's uh, I don't, yeah, texture resampling. I don't know if everybody's seen the associated post yet, but there's there's been some interesting discussion about uh, kind of getting the best quality texture uploads and using a kind of an obscure debug setting. To do that, so if if I'm reading this correctly, it sounds like we have the capability to do. You know, you can't actually upload an image that's higher res than 1024. But um, if I'm reading this correctly, we have the ability to to you know let you try to upload a larger image and then we'll downsample it to 1024 um, you know at the upload stage if if there's some appropriate debug setting set does that sound right and does, does that work in in our viewer or just in Firestorm okay so I mean if that if that actually gives you better image results then it seems like it would be easy to change the defaults on the debug option to to make that kind of more of a mainstream workflow. Um, is is that something that we should be considering? You say you don't think we should do that.
Uh, I suppose that's true. We would be kind of, uh, you know, all those textures wind up as 1024. Um, honestly, I'm curious how many of them wind up as anything other than 1024 now. You know, even if people are doing their own down, down sampling, do they ever actually set their target resolution lower than that? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, those are two separate questions. <laughs> For a single upload fee, you get all the mipmap levels. Uh, isn't that the case now? I mean, the the J2C does have a, kind of an image pyramid structure to it. I think you got these different discard levels. Well, yeah, it's it, it it's it's treated as one image. Um, you know, for for you know, it, it's one it's one texture in our. Uh, in our inventory system, but I mean, internally it actually has those different levels and it's supposed to decide, you know, the right one to use for whatever that's worth. You're talking about actually making all of the different resolutions uh, on the fly. Yeah, that's not a crazy idea. Is there a Jira for that? That might be just a, a little nudge in the direction of um, encouraging people to use lower res textures as if we actually give them the lower res textures for free as part of the upload process. Uh, how do you think that should work? You'd, you know, you pick a name at upload and then it makes, you know, name underscore 1024, name underscore 512, something like that. You know, it was like premium features. Um, okay, well, if there's a Jira for that, then that's that's worth uh, that's something that's worth kicking around. Um, you know, it's it's not going to uh, cause a, a sudden change of heart from the uh, you know more pixels equals better crew, but it you know folks who are trying to do the right thing, it just it doing the pixel. Yeah, makes it a little easier for them to do that. Yeah, that's true. If we want people to all be using it, then it would be maybe less desirable to make it a premium feature. How low would you go on that? I wouldn't, uh, I don't assume you want, you know, images that are two by two or whatever.
People didn't gripe about the names. I mean, they requested a texture called, uh, uh, you know, horse, and they get a texture called horse 1024 in their inventory. And the ones who aren't really on board with this whole uh, downsampling thing. <laughs> I like the way you think, Beck. Yeah, I'll give you something to cry about, argument. All right, well, if there's not a juror for that, uh, it would be helpful to have one. All right, well, I think that's all I've got for this week. Anything else folks want to talk about? Uh, sorry, Lucy, there's only one of me. I've got as much uh, Animesh doings as I can already. Still on the list. Well, I haven't been successfully copied yet. I don't know if the uh I don't know if the bicubic is something where it's you know just in principle worse idea or if the you know, particular default coefficients that they're using are, you know, they're tuned for smoothness, but it gives you more, uh, gives you more blurring or, you know, they're tuned for sharpening, so it gives you, you know, more ringing or whatever. There's, there's always going to be trade-offs like that. Which of those is optimal may well depend on the particular texture.
Oh. Bye, Ryder. Thanks for coming by. Have you done any tests with using that for normal map resizing? I can imagine some kind of a scheme for for normal map uh, down sampling that actually used quaternions or something. I mean, you're not really you're not really trying to do this component wise. You're trying to act on on vectors, right?
as far as I know, there's nothing you know, SL specific about questions of how to interpolate uh, normal maps, but it is uh, you know, certainly relevant to people trying to make stuff that works here. All right, well, maybe we can wrap it up for this week. I think we've probably uh, used up our topics. Um, let's see, as far as I know, we're on a regular schedule this month. Should be should be having a meeting again next week. So uh, we'll see everybody then. Awesome. Thanks, Peter. Well, I'm not positive we're out of topics, but it seemed like we were uh, running a little dry. Uh, selectable option at multiple sizes. That's, yeah, that would be another possibility. Yeah, yeah, and we have said that uh, trying to do better accounting for textures is part of what we want to do with ArcTAM. All right. Well, have a good one, all, and we'll uh, talk to you later. 
Awesome. Thanks, Fear. Thanks, Lindens. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming.